I'm to talk about the return on investment, so I'll, I'll go on to the, the next topic. But the big thing about this slide and the punchline for this slide, the investment was too large to let go. It was too large to, you know, people look at what's the money going toward and what are we getting out of it on a project. When that, when the size of the operation was looked at, the belief was we can't let this fail. And so the size uh, of it uh, was a driver, at least in that regard. This is probably the biggest slide the word there was here. And the short version is people thought their manufacturing processes were um, proprietary. And in the meetings there, they would go to its <coughs> effect. They would listen to each other. Early on, it was a confusion over what to say, right? So you go to an organization, you are a Motorola employee, that's known. You're sitting in a meeting with people who six months ago you were calling your blood enemies. Uh, prior to the, a, a, an act in 1982, I believe, it was illegal. It was against United States law to share pricing information in the same meeting room. With the person. So there were changes that had to be made in the early 80s that even allowed for this kind of cooperation to take place. Before I got the project, I happened to enter, get a chance to talk to a woman who was a colleague of mine in the training and development group, and her husband was at Cemetery. And I said, so what's your husband's like experience at Cemetery? And she said, he comes home, home at night with headaches for fear that he's been a traitor to his own company. So the notion of how to go to an organization, share the knowledge about what you do in common, but not share what is proprietary, was giving people headaches. They were moving toward a cooperative model they had never seen before, never participated in before, knew the cost of saying too much, and so the early effort was, was difficult in that <coughs> What they discovered, though, finally in these meetings was, is that what they were calling as proprietary was often just different names for the same process. Early on, at Texas Instruments, they called a chip a bar because of the original shape of it. And so early in Texas Instruments, that's what a, a, a chip was called. So we have this as common in, in technology as well as other areas. We have jargon and language and terms for what we're doing. And over time, in discussion at these meetings, people were able to say, especially high level people say, can't you see we're talking about the same thing? So that allowed them to get a better definition of what is pre-competitive and what is competitive. They have had a lot of experience with pre-competitive. The Semiconductor Industry Association time of saying, well, what do we all have in common? Well, we need good talent. So the Semiconductor Industry Association supported engineering programs. We know that, that we need good talent. Whatever our comp competitive abilities are, we know we need to draw from the talent pool. So they had examples of what pre-competitive meant. And what they were able to do at Semitech, they were able to extend that. And they were able to extend that by making refined definitions of what we have in common and what we have that's just ours. Our piece of this, that's the value add, uh, that's a competitive advantage to what, to what a product can do. So the refinement of what our secrets are and what we're holding in common is what took place there. They also realized by going to a common standard for suppliers and for material uh, suppliers that it allowed them to have more power. So they had suppliers might be meeting 12 different standards. And they went to move, meet, went to meeting one standard, and that meeting one standard means that uh, the the ability to, to, to for for to ask more of a supplier because he is or she is meeting one standard that meets twelve manufacturers, rather than meeting twelve different standards that have small intricacies that are different among them that don't amount to anything. So the common standard Symantec that allowed them to move toward one thing was a, a big thing in terms of what they did. Uh, and that's a, this this a slide essentially covers these items. Uh, the 85 to 15 uh, also sometimes talked about to being 80-20 in terms of what the standard dimensions are versus the, the, uh, the uh, proprietary special parts are within the manufacturing process. Once these early things took place, once, these, once the early things took place, they showed how co fierce competitors could share knowledge. Then it took on a norm of its own. They got more refined at saying, okay, what else can we do that's our common interest? Uh, the the 12-inch uh, the wafer was a big deal that came out of this organization at this time. Probably, uh, I have done research in this area, 
since I finished this book, I now study how people use information communication technology. So my interests have shifted somewhat since I did this essentially book on manufacturing and production processes. Uh, but that was probably the 12 inch wafer was probably the beginning point for the work for International Semitech because that was clear that advantage across the world to go to standards on that was going to, uh, was going to take place. But the kinds of things that are drawn here was learning to use common software. Uh, they used um, a, to a quality management, a TQM program was kind of combined with procurement for a special program at that place that, uh, to cause standard standards to be used across the organization. And Intel had a model of constructive confrontation where people essentially fought out over differences over problems as long as personalities were not brought in as a part of the difference over what was going on. And so people learned from that model as well. Uh, the big thing for Semitech was that it operated from assignees. And the money wasn't the big thing, the talent was. And so to be willing to send your best engineering and engineers and physicists to Semitech to share information with people from these uh, 11 other organizations was the real resource contribution for this, uh, this and how, how it went on. Uh, we talked about a new, new mission statement. Came out uh, frequently. This was, uh, uh, they had an operation of uh, anticipating future needs and had future strategy groups about which part of the technology was developing, which part of the technology was uh, had more ambiguity, the least certainty, and for that reason was going to require the most resources, and so that's where the, their money went at that point. But the new mission <coughs> statement, I've already touched on and how that's changed over time. It also allowed them to identify progress. Um, they were very different than an organization that began as a precursor for them in Austin called MCC. Uh, Semitech did not use MCC as a model for their work. And the reason for that in part was things got off to a wrong foot in MCC and there was tension between the CEO uh, at MCC and the member companies. And the member companies, the, the, the visibility of that is the member companies were not willing to send assignees to MCC and they had to hire engineering talent on their own to do the tasks that were there. So the, the big accomplishment at Semitech was for these, quote, blood enemies to come together to work in the same building, in the same room, in a single spot, and share information about how to help the industry. Uh, people talked about the ease of which they could say, this is my Motorola hat, this is my Semitech hat. So the ability to switch roles between who am I speaking for now? Am I speaking for my firm or am I speaking for Semitech? That they were they talked about, since I'm not an engineer or technician, I can't delve into how they were able to make those distinctions, but I commonly got an assertion that once that distinction is clear, you can say, who, who's my boss here? Whose interest am I operating in here? And they talked about the ease at which they were able to turn the buttons on and off between Semitech and their, and their home organization in terms of, of what they did. Uh, some of the people who read my book said it's how they'll get along in kindergarten uh, because it, there's not technical information in the book. So it, it's about cooperation practices and they're interpreted at rather high level and abstract level. There's an article out of this book uh, that's published in the Academy of Management Journal in 1995 uh, that takes a, a, a competitive system view toward this topic uh, that's gotten a lot of attention. And so, um, in, in general, the view is a rather abstract one toward these concrete behaviors that went on in Semitech. As I've given this presentation other times in the past, people in the industry have said, geez, he's kind of excited about our work. And so we're the one who did that. So let me, let me just touch on, I'm clear about who did the work at Semitech, and, and I'm a scribe and an observer of what went, went on rather than someone who had anything to do with what took the place there. That's the, the main points that I have to make, do um, you have questions for me about what I've done or, or what I've talked about here briefly today? Yes. 